Hi everyone, my name is Shannon. Welcome back to my channel. Today's theme is gonna be all about lemons. And uh, I'm gonna show you three different home decor type rustic slash farmhouse DIYs. Each one ranging between two to four dollars, so very budget friendly. And I am gonna list um, all the items that I use in the description box below. So go ahead and take a peek. And if you are new to my channel, welcome. If you do like what you see, you can go ahead and, and hit the red subscribe button that you see. That way you will be notified every single time I upload a new video. That being said, I hope everybody's having a wonderful day, uh, staying safe, and let's begin. The first DIY, I'm just gonna take the shadow box and push out the back. Once the back is removed, just go ahead and remove the succulent and you will see a pin there. So just go ahead and use your pliers just to remove it. Very easy to do. Once that's done, I'm just gonna quickly sand everything just to smooth out any of the rough edges. Now I'm just gonna add two coats of yellow acrylic paint to the frame. Um, usually in between coats, I will let it sit for a good few hours. Otherwise you're gonna get streaks as soon as you apply the second coat. Another trick I do like to use to speed up the time is I will use my blow dryer and that just, you get, the acrylic paint will just dry instantly and then you can go ahead and do your second coat right away. Now I'm just gonna Mod Podge some printer paper to the backing that we removed earlier. Again, I always leave the Mod Podge sit for about 15 minutes to dry, but beforehand, I always make sure to smooth out the air bubbles. And while that's setting, I went ahead and printed out this cute image of some lemon slices. And uh, since it was just on printer paper, I went ahead and glued it to the back of some poster board. That way it's just a little bit more firmer and it doesn't look as translucent. So now that the paint is dried, I'm gonna do this technique called a dry brushing. I just love how it makes everything look very rustic and weather looking. So I'm gonna just use this uh, paintbrush that I got from the dollar store and I'm just gonna dip it in the paint, but not very much and just rub off any excess on your sheet of paper. You don't want it to be too wet because you don't want it to be like completely saturated on the, um, the frame. So just watch my technique here. I'm just doing very light strokes back and forth. So now I'm just going to put the backing in its place. So in order to do that, I'm just hot gluing each corner, just a very small amount because you don't want it to seep through the front. And then just go ahead and seal it back to the frame. So now that it's in place, I'm going to attach the lemon. In order to do that, I wanted to elevate it. So I picked up this package of these wood cubes. I think it was 12 in a pack and I got them from the Dollar Tree. Anyway, I hot glue it to the center and then I'm just going to hot glue the slice of lemon to the center as well. There, and then, then you'll see the final result. So I think it turned out really cute. So for the next DIY, I'm just gonna take this eight by 10 canvas that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. I'm just gonna start by uh, removing the canvas from the frame. So I'm just gonna use some pliers and a screwdriver just to lift out the staples from the back. Um, it, it is uh, a little bit harder to take these ones out, I find. Uh, good on the Dollar Tree, very good sturdy product. Um, however, it did take me probably a good 15 minutes just to remove everything. Once the canvas is removed, I still want to keep it, so I'm just going to uh, clean up the edges and make it fit the frame um, nicely. So in order to do that, I love using my paper cutter. It is by Fiskars. Um, I 
did pick it up from Walmart for $20, I believe. Best investment ever. And uh, I feel like it's just so much easier than using scissors. And I find like scissors, I tend to go off the, off the line a little bit. So this way it just keeps everything nice and clean. Now I'm just gonna use this cute little uh, image that I found on the internet and I'm going to um, just cut that as well to make it the same size as the back of the canvas. So you'll see here, I'm just gonna trace it out and use my paper cutter to just clean off the edges again. So you can keep the frame like this uh, with the, the natural wood color. However, I just wanted to give it a deeper, darker stain. Uh, I do not have a stain at the moment. So another alternative, what I'm doing here is I'm taking my brown acrylic paint and I'm adding it to a little bit of water. And that way it just helps to dilute it. And then when you put it onto the wood, it just allows the natural wood grains to show through. So I really like that. It, looks, it makes it look even more rustic. And then after you can just go ahead and take a wet paper towel just to remove any excess um, paint. So now I'm just going to use my glue stick to attach the image to the back of the canvas. I like the glue stick because I feel you can get a little bit more coverage that way and it just really seals all the corners also. I find if you use like a hot glue or something, it just gets, the image just looks all bumpy. I mean, I guess another option, you could use some double-sided tape as well. So it's really up to you, but I just I love using my glue stick. <laughs> And then once you have it all glued and you have it all um, positioned correctly, now we're just gonna go ahead and hot glue the image permanently to the back of the frame. And I usually just start with one side first just to make sure that everything's aligned properly. And then what I'll do is I'll hot glue the rest of the frame. You have to really work quick with the, the glue because once it's out of that gun, it really dries fast. And now I'm just gonna take this wood piece that I had stained also, just to hot glue it to the bottom of the frame. This way it's just gonna act as an extra support just for the frame to stand up on its own. So you'll see in just a moment, the final results. I think it turned out cute. I just added, um, you'll see in the next picture, I added another little touch to the image. I just used some more of those lemon slices that I printed out and just um, made a little cute design and put it in the corner of the picture. So let me know which one you like better and uh, would love to get your feedback. So moving on to the next DIY, I'm going to do the uh, garland. And I got these wooden beads from Michael's. Uh, very good price if you get the 40% off coupon. You only get 36, I think, but it was still maybe $4. Uh, however, I found the best deal was I ordered a 700 pack of multiple different sizes from Amazon for 20 bucks. So I thought that was actually pretty reasonable. Um, so here I'm just going to give it just one coat of white paint. So you'll see, I'm just gonna, it, I put them on um, on a skewer just to help line everything up and just make it a lot easier to paint. So while the beads are drying, I'm gonna go ahead and start making the garland. So I'm gonna take two long pieces of yarn, take them quite longer than what you want the length of your garland to be. I'm gonna show you later, but I want those pieces to be able to tie the, the tassels on at either end. And what I'm doing to apply the beads is I'm using a floss threader. So don't be disgusted, it's brand new. And I didn't have anything else on hand. Um, you know, another trick you could do is put a little bit of tape at the edge just to give you a little bit more of a point. 
or if you are um, a knitter, you might have a yarn needle that would also help too. So you see I have a lot of extra length at the end of the, the garland. So now I'm gonna make my tassel and I'm just taking a lid relatively the size that you want your tassel to be. And I'm gonna wrap it around 25 times to be exact. And once I've done that, I'm just gonna cut that off and just keep your finger in place in the center because you don't want to lose that and that way i'm going to thread one of the ends of the garland into the tassel so i usually wrap it around twice and then i'm going to tie a knot but don't cut the knot off like don't cut the excess uh, yarn off at this point just let it dangle at the bottom once that's attached, I'm just gonna go ahead and take another long piece of yarn and wrap it around the top of the tassel several times and then tie a knot in the back. Now, the reason I like it longer is that I don't wanna cut off the excess at the knot. I'd rather use that excess to um, thread through the knot and then that way, when you cut everything at the end, you have all these nice even pieces rather than these two little jagged pieces kind of hanging out the knot if that makes sense. So here's where you can clean everything up. So I just smooth it out with my fingers, make things nice and straight, and then any excess I'm just going to use my scissors and just trim it all off. This way it just cleans up the edges really nicely. So for the lemon on the tassel, I'm just gonna go ahead and freehand a lemon on some yellow cardstock paper that I had. I just like it because it's a lot thicker and it won't bend as easily. So now I'm just gonna take some green felt that I had at Christmas. I'm just gonna fold a little bit in half and I'm just gonna create a little leaf in order to put on the lemon. So I'm just gonna attach the leaf to the lemon with some of my glue stick, and then I'm just gonna use my hole punch and just punch a hole at the top. That way I can put the yarn through and then attach it to the uh, tassel. So here's the garland so far. Already it's looking really great. Um, so I'm gonna add the lemon just to one of the tassels. I mean, it's up to you if you wanted to add it to both, go right ahead. I'm gonna just um, knot some yarn to the lemon and I'm not gonna necessarily permanently knot it to the tassel. I'm just gonna thread it through the center of the tassel. That way it's still set in place but I can remove it if I want. So if I, you know, I feel like yellow and spring go together. So if maybe I wanted to make a flower or something, I can change it up a little bit. All right, everyone. So we've come to the end of the video. I had so much fun making all these DIYs. I hope I inspired you to do something like this. Give me your feedback on what one you like the best. And um, I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I will keep you posted for the next video. Take care.